这是什么鬼啊？ Scissor Seven is a Chinese anime about a guy called Seven who washed up on a beach with no memory of who he is or where he came from, and all the crazy content he gets involved in around the island with his two chicken companions. He's also just a horrible assassin. But he can control a pair of scissors, so that's pretty cool. As the story progresses, Seven gets random glimpses of his past, and eventually he ends up having to confront who he actually is and deal with everything that's happened. It's an extremely fast-paced and over-the-top series that has one of the craziest dynamics of storytelling between being a completely random comedy show to a very serious story-driven show that somehow manages a near-perfect balance between the two. The structure of each season is comedy-driven character episodes with some overarching plot sprinkled in early episodes, and a much more serious serious and well thought out story in the last few episodes of each season. It basically runs with that throughout all three of the current seasons, with the first being more comedy driven and random, and the second and third being a bit more serious but still absolutely wild. Throughout the first season you get to meet a lot of new characters that seem more like one-off characters and less new characters in the other two seasons, but nearly every person you end up meeting throughout the show ends up being pretty important to the story overall, with some of them being crucial components to the later seasons. Just to name a few, there's a blue chicken, Daibao, with a really dark backstory about cockfighting, but he's the person chicken? whatever that found Seven washed up on the beach after he had lost his memory and took him under his wing. Zhao Fei is another blue chicken that was left in the care of Dai Bao that can actually fly and help Seven travel around as one of his main assassin tools. There's a girl called Thirteen who is the love interest. Oh, Miss May, this rose is for you and fellow assassin of the series, who tries to kill Seven quite a few times throughout the series for various reasons. Da Chun is an indestructible virgin, and the friendly rival type character of the show. There's a girl called Cola, which is much easier to pronounce than all these other names, who has the power of freezing anyone of the opposite gender, and she likes to hang out with and manipulate Seven into doing random things with her for fun. There's even a gang of cats and dogs that are run by characters called Mad Bark and Meow Kitty, which are just amazingly lazy names for characters. There are so many characters that are so unique and memorable that I found just about every single character. I wanted to learn more about them and where they came from and what led them to this point. And with some of the characters, you actually get entire backstories that tell you exactly that. There's specifically two assassin characters later, Redtooth and Blackbird, that I really wanted to know more about, and both got backstories explained to various degrees. Nearly all of the characters have their serious moments and their comedic moments, but the show really reminds me of how, like, Mob Psycho was written, where a lot of little funny moments happen throughout the show, but build up to a pretty serious end each time, and even the characters are somewhat similar. Specifically with Seven being relatively close to how Mob is, by being more of a pushover character that just kind of goes with whatever Dai Bao tells him to do, without really questioning it a whole lot, but he's also a lot more confident than Mob as a character. And Dai Bao is basically the Regan of the series, with him being fairly manipulative towards Seven, but also really wanting to help him and considering him a close and reliable friend. They both have the same character relationship dynamic between the two leads of the shows, and both take very similar paths towards the end. And speaking of comparing the two series, I think it's pretty obvious that the art style is also very reminiscent of how Mob Psycho looks and feels, where it's less like a standard anime art style, with a lot more dynamic and cartoony feeling characters. I believe Scissor 7 is the first project to come from ShareFun Studios, as far as I'm aware. Feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I'd love to know if they've actually done anything else, but I haven't been able to find anything. And I gotta say, they did an amazing job with this show. This style of animation is one of my all-time favorites, where it's a lot more seemingly simplistic looking, but it's also extremely detailed at the same time and has some over-the-top high-quality fight scenes and everything just flows really well. I'm a big fan of seeing more stylized shows that take the advantages of being able to use the unlimited imagination with drawing and designing characters and stuff, and this is one of those shows that seems to really put an emphasis on being more fun and crazy with its animation and writing in a way that isn't too absurd. 
Like, they have a little bit in the show where they'll just randomly draw the characters in completely different styles and change up the entire animation to express how the character is feeling in that moment for a quick or simple joke that lands for me every single time. As someone who likes to draw a lot even though I'm not really that good at it, sometimes I tend to hyper fixate on how the art looks and how smooth animations are and just be overly critical with art in general because I I'm weird I guess. But for some reason with the more stylized shows, they just get a massive pass in my head and I can just sit back and really enjoy them and actually take them in, much more than I can with other shows. Even when I did spot small errors in the art, like this guy's neck just being completely gone for whatever reason, or some of the more choppy animations, it didn't necessarily bother me as much because the show seemed more like it was trying to take itself less seriously and it was just having more fun. I always end up comparing this style to like YouTuber animations where the art and animation might not be like top studio quality, but it has a lot more personality than the standard cookie cutter animated shows. But there were a few minor things that I kind of had a problem with, and most of it is just personal preference rather than actual problems with the show. I initially started watching the show in English because I saw a lot of people praising the English version, but it really just ended up reinforcing my habit of watching shows with the original audio. Right away, you want spicy kid? No. I don't really know what it is about English dubs, but they usually feel so off and lazy to me, like half of the actors aren't even interested in playing the part, and even the Japanese audio felt really wrong to me, like the voices didn't really match at all, but I do highly recommend watching it in the original Mandarin. It's the only version that actually felt like everything matched and all of the performances were pretty good overall. But with every other language that it was dubbed in, I felt like at least one of the characters wasn't really interested or it didn't match the character design whatsoever and really just took me out of it and had me start to lose interest. And the only actual thing in the show that bothered me a bit was how much comedy was used. I'm not a massive fan of comedy series and prefer a lot more serious tones throughout the shows I watch, but Scissor 7 is extremely extremely heavy with comedy and it doesn't always land for me personally. But a majority of the time it was decent enough that it never really made me want to stop watching entirely. But with those being my only real concerns and annoyances I had, I think overall the show was really good. I think the best aspect of the show was just how truly random and wild it feels. A lot of the stories tend to feel extremely predictable because it's almost like everything is at the point of being either recreations or random mashups of past work where you can probably guess the ending each time. While watching through Scissor 7, it was like watching a show you think you know what's going to happen, only to be completely blindsided by a dominatrix grand. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. There are so many moments that just subvert all expectations, and it builds up the idea that you really have no idea what's going to happen in the show. It's rare to see any piece of media that is as well balanced as Scissor 7 is. It's overly silly and serious at the same time. The action can be insane while also stopping partway through to make a small joke just to break the tension. The story continuously gets more serious while simultaneously throwing episodes of random moments at you. The characters change so much, but at the same time, they've hardly changed at all. It's genuinely one of the wildest shows I've ever seen, and I really liked it. And I can't wait for the movie and any additional seasons that come out in the future. But it's still pretty weird. Thanks for watching.